Let's unbox an art supply haul. Ooh, exciting! Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and I have bought a job lot of art supplies. Now it was sold to me as ink and I haven't looked in here but already I can see there are some things that are not Jess ink. I'm happy with that and I'm quite excited to see what I've actually got in this tub. There seems to be lots of things so let's have a little look. We got ink, we got some acrylic paint there and some bottles of various things. I have no idea what they are and the Japan Stationery Company. Hmm. So let's get stuck in and have a look. We'll have a look at everything and then at the end I'll try using the inks and see how well they work because I think some may well be dried up. But I'm happy with that because I got a real bargain on this box and also some of the empty bottles I'm going to use to store some other inks in. Right, let's get the acrylic paint out of the way. Right, ooh, got this Reeves Rose Madder. Let me show you that. It looks a little bit separated. Don't know if that's any good. I'll give it a try. So we've got Rose Madder and Reeves Grass Green. This is orange, another Reeves. Again, that doesn't look very well. Hmm. And this is a light green. And we got a black, a Mars black. Always good because I use a lot of black and white in my acrylic for my journaling. Right, I can't. Ah, uh, what's this? This looks like paint. It is Partners Artist Acrylic Leaf Green. Doesn't make a noise when I shake it. Let's take the lid off. Have a look. Oh, it's still nicely moist in there. Yep, that'll be fine. Oh, there's another one. And this one is, oops, sorry for the clattering, crimson. So let's have a look in here. Oh, yes. It's very usable. And, oh, here's a yellow. Let's have a look inside. Yep, oh, that's very usable too. So I've got a nice couple of pounds worth of acrylics there already, so I think I'm in profit just on my acrylic paints that I wasn't expecting. Don't think there are any. Oh, there's a paint. This is Reeves Greyhound. Oil colour, chrome yellow mid. Now, I don't use oil paints so far. I've never tried them. Oh, I can't get the lid off this one. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What's it like inside? Yeah, it's like that. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to look like, having never used oil paints. But maybe I'll try just with that one oil and see how I get on. I just never fancied oil painting because you have to let them dry and patience isn't a virtue of mine. Right, where should we go now? I can see groups of things. Let's have a look at this. Oh, is this leaking? Right, it's a blue Parker Quink box and inside is a WH Smith permanent brown ink. I've just had a sniff and it smells just like you imagine ink to smell. I don't know why you needed to know that, but I wanted to find out. So that box, I think, is pretty dead. I don't know, though. I think I might use that in a journal. I'm sure I can come up with a reason to use that. I'll keep that. Right, where should we go next? Oh, a bulldog clip. What was useful? That's something I like about buying these junky lots of art materials. You get the most unusual little bits and pieces that you may not have bothered with. But seeing as they're in the box, you try them and decide, yep, yeah, you want to use them. You better take the address off. I'll put my thumb over the address because somebody's address is on there. And they're pencil heads and they're 0.5mm HB Pentel spare leads. There we go. We can have a look at them now. Nice little case. I imagine they're vintage. Oh, it's got a little one of those. What's one of those? It's a key code overlay. I have no idea what a key code overlay is. I'll have to look that up. 
And then we've got all these legs. Ah, they're not all the same. These are 2B, 2H, 3H. So have we got a full set? And this is a 0.9. Right, so they're not what this box said. They're a jumble of everything. Very useful, though. I get through an awful lot of these. I much prefer these to sharpening pencils. Again, patience not being my virtue. Click on the end and you've got a freshly sharpened pencil. They suit me down to the ground. What should we look at next? Look at all those goodies. They're very dusty, but that doesn't matter. There are some prices. I can see something down here with a 99p sticker on from the works. And it's Ocaldo Indian Ink. And if I show you in there, it's about half full. I've got my camera in a different position because this box is so big. And I'm finding it very difficult to actually get this where it needs to be. This ink contains shellac, may be diluted with distilled water, dries to a water-resistant film, suitable for use with brush, drawing instrument and airbrush. Do not use in fountain pens. Oh, now that's interesting because I was thinking of getting a fountain pen to use all these inks. Hmm. Not such a good idea with Indian ink then. Right, do we have any other Indian inks in here? I wouldn't know what I was looking for. Let's just go for this one. Process Black WN, so it's Windsor & Newton. Show you the... Now this is Windsor & Newton Process Black. With a free spider. <laughs> right, what else have we got here? Um, we'll go for this. This is, oh, another Process Black. There we go. Oh, what does it say? Absolutely opaque, contains no blue, photographs perfectly black. Ideal for blocking out negatives, for pure greys, thin with water. Add process white for a lighter tone. Works freely in airbrush. Oh, well, I have no idea what I'm going to do with that. And can I see any more like that? No. All right, we'll go for this. This is Dr. P.H. Martins. I've heard of this, Mick. It's quite expensive. Is there anything left? Oh, yes. Oh, that's a nice treat. Oh, the price is on this from the art shop, £2.35. Oh, I'm very pleased with that. We got any more with stoppers on? Yes, this one. Oh, this is a Dr. P.H. or Phil Martin. No idea, really, but that looks pretty dry. Bombay Red Indian Ink. Oh, that would have been so much fun. Yep. <laughs> All that's coming out of there is little bits of red dried ink. Oh, well, I'll see if I can clean that out. It may soak off with water and then I can use it for something else. But that is a shame. Right. Have we... Oh, stop clattering. Right. Have we got anything else with a squidgy thing on the end? Dropper. No. So I assume... Oh, wait a minute. Here's one. Oh, this is a Martin one as well. Bombay Yellow Indian Ink. And look at that. Separate it out a bit. Oh, that seems to have mixed nicely. Let's open it up and have a look. I'm going to be so covered in ink by the end of this. Ooh, very nice. Well, already, I'm over the moon with this for the price I paid. And I've still got all this left. Ooh. Way next. Let's take this one off the top. This is Windsor & Newton Calligraphy Ink. For fountain and dip pens. So I will be able to use that one in my fountain pen. Let's have a look. We've got more calligraphy ink. And this is sepia. And this one is sepia too. Oh, this person must have used a lot of sepia. Or oh, is this empty? Yes, that one's dry. Don't know if you can see inside. Right, what's next? Another Windsor and Newton calligraphy. This one is crimson. Another one which is light blue. And another light blue. This one looks the same, yep. 
Indian ink, Indian, Indian ink, Indian red. Yep, that's still nice. Oh, look at this one, Windsor yellow. Give it a bit of a shake. Yep, that's going to mix nicely. Windsor yellow. I've got, oops, one of those. <laughs> Anybody know what that is? I have no idea. I don't think it's art related. I could be wrong, but I don't think it is. Right, we've got Stephen's Black Drawing Ink again. Another one of those. Did we have? No, I'm thinking of this Process Black Ink. Oh, that's a different one. Indian Ink, Shake Gently, Fade Resistant, 22 millimetres. Oh, there's a date on this. No, it's not. It's just a number. And this cost £2.25. I wonder how long ago that cost two pound twenty five. Another Windsor and Newton violet calligraphy ink. Oh wow, that is going to be so much fun to use. Do we have any more that look like Windsor and Newton? This one does. No, it's not. It's Encre d'Argent, which is silver ink. J. Herbam. Is that a good make or not? For dip and glass pens only. That is such a pretty jar. Is the ink still liquid? Let's have a look. Oh, it's very thick. If I do that quickly, it's not running out. Hmm, I hope it's usable. I'll use it to paint with anyway. Very pretty. Right, let's have a look. This is a Elise fountain pen ink in Cerise. Or Cerise, I suppose it depends how you say it. Hmm, we're next. I think we've done all of those. Oh, I can see another stopper. And here, is that another one of those? Yes, Martin's Bombay Blue Indian Ink. Right, I'm going to have to rummage to see if there are any more stoppers. Yes, here's another stopper. Oh, how exciting. This one is green. That's plenty in it it's virtually full oh let's go for this because it's in my way and look at that i have never seen an ink bottle like that before it is pelican fount india drawing ink for fountain pens oh this is good because if you leave it there you don't have to dip well i don't know maybe you don't mind dip, lifting your pen up but it brings the inkwell right down to nearly desk level Oh, I just like that, the shape on it, look. It's like a swan-necked ink bottle. The ink is still fluid inside, and when that's empty, I'm going to use it to put another ink in. Probably store Indian ink in that. I really like that. Right, where next? I won't look at the bottles yet. Let's look at the inks first. This one is crimson, another, another Windsor & Newton crimson. And we got another process black. What are we going to do with all this process black? And this is from Randall Cox. Ooh. So is this another process black? Yes. What on earth was this person doing? Lots of processing with black. And can I see any more of those process blacks? Yes, there's another one. And another one. I'm getting a very full table. Mm, no more. Oh, wait a minute. Yep, <laughs> I think it is. Yep, just whoops. Here's another process black and another Stevens black drawing Indian ink, which is the one you can't put in the fountain pen, is it? No, it doesn't say. Hmm, I'll think about that. I don't know whether to try it in a pen, it could blow my pen up. Perhaps not. Right, what's this year? Artist drawing Indian ink from Partners. I think that's all dried up. Oh, I can't get the lid off. There we go. Yep, all dried up. Hmm, what? Oh, that's a pretty shaped pot. Indian ink again. Pelican, I think. There's only a little bit of the label left, but that dried up again. Oh. Yep, that one's all dried up. Oh, is this an 
another Winsor Newton? No, this is a best quality black ink. Ooh. Doesn't say who it's made by. Hmm. I'm always dubious of these people who be put best quality in their brand. <laughs> so we'll find out. But so, there we go. Another one. Let's have a look inside. Get a skin on the top. Pop that. It's nice and runny. We're running out of... Oh, no, we're not running out of inks. I've got all these in boxes yet. Wow. And some Parker Quink Solvex Red. Ooh, probably about half a bottle there. And we've got this, which is Fountain Pen Ink by Manuscript. w.calligraphy.co.uk Ah, oh, is this another... Ah, another acrylic artist colour. Cadmium Orange Hue. Brilliant orange. Hmm, let's unscrew it. Yes, that's still very usable. Now that looks quite yellowy on my screen, but it is actually a bright orange. Ah, there's another paint. This one is light portrait pink. Oh, now that, if it's runny, is going to be perfect because I draw a lot of faces and girls. Oh, yes, I shouldn't, but yep. <laughs> It's nice and runny, and I've now got a dirty finger. Ah, well, rub it in. So I think that is all the acrylics done. Let's have a look. Let's have a break from inks now and have a look at some of the other bits and pieces we've got. Got another clip. We can get it. There we go. Little white clip. Oh, what's in here? These are those converters you put into a cartridge pen. And you can use ink with them because they're like refillable cartridges. Oh, they still move. They're a bit stiff. Oop. Oh, and that's a squidgy one. <laughs> you put in the ink and you squeeze it and it'll suck the ink up. I was wondering about whether to get a fountain or a cartridge pen, but I don't like the waste that you get on a cartridge pen, throwing those little plastic cartridges away all the time. Even though I do have some here, I picked up in another job lot of inks. So, they will be perfect when I get my pen. Oh, it's a broken bit of plastic. Ooh. Right, we take those out of there and have a look. A bit dirty. That's a very useful box, isn't it? I have to decide which inks I'm putting in there, but I really like that. Very simple, very plain. I would never go out and buy that, but it is going to be so useful. Oh, these are nice. They're like little inkwell things to go into. Well, they, the glass liners to go into inkwells. Oh, they are so pretty. I do have. This morning I put this in here because on our other YouTube channel, we go mudlarking and I found this little milk glass jar and I also found this top of an inkwell so I discovered this morning it fits perfectly but I wondered if it'll fit one of these blue liners because this one looks like a fair size oh no it's too small oh well that is going to have to be an inkwell instead oh it's very pretty so I'm not sure what to do with these blue liners hmm I'll have to see if I can get an inkwell to match oh now that, if you look inside, actually looks like one of those wasp traps where you put some sugary stuff in the bottom, the wasp flies in and then can't get back out, which seems a terribly cruel way of killing a wasp. But I think that's an inkwell. It's very pretty, but cleaning that is going to be really difficult. I think what I could do is get one of those pipettes and put some water in and then suck all the dirt out of the bottom. I think that could be gone too far. I'll try cleaning it and see how I get on. So we're down to this. Now, before we go back to the inks, let's have a look at these strange, weird and wonderful bottles. The original Treasure Gold Liquid Leaf One Fluid Ounce. Shake well, pour a small amount into the lid, use a gilding brush, dries in 20 minutes. Fill in with brush bath if necessary. <laughs> I think 
I could shake this for years and that's never going to mix. I think it's completely dry. Ooh, it looks like caramel cake, doesn't it? Let's have a look inside. Ooh. That in there. Right. Ooh, it's very strong smelling. So that's... Oh, it's... Although it's not mixed, look. That's leaving quite a nice coating of gold on my finger. Ooh. Right, I couldn't resist. I've got this... Pencil of the day, nice day graphite pencil. And I'm going to very unceremoniously take the lid off and use the end of this pencil. See if I can stir it. Right, that's very gloopy, but I think that's going to be usable. Oh, it's a shame now, I've got it all stuck on the end of my pencil. You can see why somebody accidentally stuck the lid on with this stuff. Right, so let's put the lid back on. And what am I going to do with this? It seems such a waste. I know. Isn't that pretty? I'm sure I'll come up with something that I can make with this afterwards. I do love using up any art supplies that I haven't finished using rather than wash them down the sink I stick them on a bit of paper oh sure we'll think of something yes that's very inspiring it's really shiny right back to the job in hand we got distracted oh, oh wow got a paper clip and let's have a look at these other inks this is J Airban Paris Ooh, I like France, so that's very fitting for me. I think we had another ink by that company. I can't see where it is now, but I'm sure we did. Right, look at the dust on these. They're going to need a good wash. Oh, look at that. Let's get another pencil. It's got a little rest. So when you put your pen down, it actually goes on the bottle. Well, that is very posh, very classy. You see the little dip there? pencil goes in oh yes well i feel dead posh using that right let's have a look what we got here illuminating raisin preparation oh that sounds like something you'd put on as an invocation or something if too thick add a little water um the thicker the preparation is used the better the result of gilding extra brilliance is obtainable with a coating of gold burnish the gilding should be done when the preparation is suitably dry. What news is this? That is pretty dried out. Yep. And the label's falling off. Right, we've got this, which is acrylic medium for acrylic. A quick dry and low viscosity milky liquid which increases flow, transparency and the gloss of acrylic colours. Medium may be diluted with water, although over thinning should be avoided. Oh, I'll try that. I've never used that. Interesting. And uh, we got some Dale Rowney art masking fluid. Hmm. Right, that's all rubberized and dry. Pop it in there. Ah, there's a skin, but under the skin is fine. Ooh, always smells of fish, this stuff. Well, that'll be very useful. Now, although I stuck my finger in there to check, just one word of warning, never stick your finger in a soda siphon. I did that once. Don't ask me how I know that's a bad idea. So we got some um, watercolour ox gall liquid. Hmm. Doesn't sound very ox friendly, does it? Increases wetting and flow of watercolours. Improves acceptance on paper, clarified ox gall. I have no idea. I've never used that and I've never heard of it. Then again, I haven't been painting that long, so that would explain it. Uh, what's this? Gum Arabic for watercolour. This is increases brilliancy, gloss and transparency of watercolours. Controls spread of wet on wet. Reduces staining. 
Oh, that's useful to me. I'm such a messy artist. Now, I do apologise if things are not always in focus. It's because these here are so obvious to my camera. I think it's focusing on them rather than what I'm showing you. Fiel pour coulerie. Liquid ox gall again. Le franc et bourgeois. Ooh. What's this? This is size for leaf metal. Oh, there we go. That's quite useful. And apply thin, even coating. Apply thin, even coating. After 15 minutes, lay on leaf metal. Keep away from light and frost. Ecoline liquid watercolour. Made in Apple Dawn, Holland. Yellow. Also, it's just a liquid watercolour then. Nothing else. I thought maybe it was some sort of chemical in such a big bottle. Ooh, it stinks. And if you look in there, it seems quite brown. Look at the state of that bottle. Ugh. Ah, right. <laughs> I thought I'd shake it to see if it was shakeable. It is. I've now got yellow everywhere. Oh, well, I didn't think I'd make it to the end of this video without being covered in ink. I was right. This is why I have some wet wipes ready. Let's clean the bottle. Well, just get the ink off. I think it'll take a lot of cleaning to clean that bottle. Yep, it's very liquid in there. I should have done that before I took the lid off. Right, a little clean up. Ooh, this box was really dirty. It's a shame that's so dirty because if I haven't got all grotty stuff like that on it, I tend to dry these out and I use them for my journaling. There we go. I think we'll give up on that. Right, let's have a look at this. This is a purple ink of Waterman Paris. Now, I know Waterman pens are expensive, so I'm assuming Waterman ink is too. Put you a bit more central. Is there anything in it? There's about half an inch in the bottom. So it's good because it'll give me a chance to try out Waterman inks. Yeah, it's not a lot in there. And we got... Luma Brilliant Concentrate Watercolours. Oh, for brush, pen and airbrush. These colours surpass all other artists' colours in brilliance and intensity. Oh, no, there's a claim. They may be mixed with one another, but use an infinite variety of tonalities. To dilute, use clean water. For a paking, use Luma Bleed Proof White. Luma White will cover anything, including dye colours and markers. Oh, Lakewood, New Jersey, USA. Let's have a look at... These bottles. Oh, ooh, there's cobwebs in there. <laughs> you can tell this hasn't been used for a while. Oh, they're on droppers. Also, they're very much like, where are they? These Dr. Martin ones. Important shake well. Scarlet. Shake it well. There you go. Let's open it up. I've got a lovely coloured hand. Oh. That is lovely. I'm really pleased with these inks. I thought I was just going to get drawing inks, but I'm going to be able to do quite a few techniques with these. So we have this one, which well, they don't say the colour on the box. So, uh, so look at this one. I don't mind there being cobwebs, but I hope a big spider doesn't jump out at me. And this is Tropic Gold. Ooh, that looks interesting. So look. Oh yes. I think it's a yellow rather than a metallic. Now, well, the, all these have got boxes, which is nice. I think if I'm going to use them, I'm going to take them out of the box because they're going to be potchy to keep taking in and out all the time. So this one is orange. Oh, more cobwebs. And this one feels a bit drier. Ew, I've got... 
masking fluid stuck to me as well now. This one is, oh look, you can see through the box there, April Green. Do we have any more of that make? Yep, we've got one more and this is True Blue. Hmm. As opposed to False Blue, I suppose. So that's definitely all of those. So I'll move those out of the way. Turn them upside down because my camera does like that big noticeable mark. There we go. Right, so Parker Quink, and I think that's dried up. Let's have a look. It's a bit thick, but it's not dried up. I'll be able to paint with that even if it's too thick for a pen right wet wipe Windsor and Newton black Indian ink with a spider doesn't want to open no, I was going to say does that mean it's never been used but no it has oh and it's dried inside just some in the corner there Still a useful little ink pot. And this doesn't... Oh, FW non-clogging waterproof drawing ink in white. Ooh. Free throwing in the finest technical pens. Excellent on all surfaces. Oh. I think that's gone hard. Well, it may be non-clogging, but it's certainly dried up. Yep. Oh, it's soft. I can poke it with this and it makes a hole. Let's have a look at these now we got. I'll lay them down. They're different, are they? No, they're all the same. We got Windsor & Newton Liquid Acrylic Ink. Turn that up the right way. So we've got Magenta... Process Magenta, Black, Ultramarine, Burned Umber, Crimson, Windsor Yellow, Ochre, and Raw Umber. Hmm. Let's open one of them. Magenta. I like magenta. Let's have a look. Oh, these have got little pipette things as well. Oh, and it's liquid. Give it a shake. Oh, I can't get the lid off. There we go. If I'm going to have another colour on my hands, it might as well be magenta. Speed <laughs> a bit too hard. Yep, I've got magenta on me. Oh, I look cleaner now than before I opened it. They're not coming off, are they? Right, so these are acrylic inks. Interesting. Let's get all this laid out nicely and then I can show you what it all looks like and have a better idea of what we've got. So this is it. As you can see by my hands, there are a variety of colours here. So let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, five Luma acrylic inks. A non-clogging ink, which isn't any good. We'll take that off there. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Windsor & Newton acrylic inks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Windsor & Newton calligraphy inks. One, two, three, four, five of these Dr. P.H. Martin Bombay Brown. Well, that one's brown and lots of different colours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven process blacks. And then various inks. They've got this Waterman's purple one. Lots of various solutions and potions and diluters for some watercolour. And we've got these little converters for some fountain pens. And one tub of Greyhound oil colour. Not forgetting our pencil heads, which are only just making it on the table. 
So all in all, I'm very pleased with this haul. Plenty of acrylics here to keep me going with my journaling. Plenty of inks to keep me going with having fun, just experimenting. So what I'm going to do now, it's going to take a while, I'm going to clear this table off and I'm going to get some of these inks and just do a little drawing. And I think I'll put it on this if it's dry. Oh no, it's still very tacky. I'll get another piece of paper. We need to let that dry. It is seriously sticky.
this is what I've come up with. It wasn't what I started doing. I thought it would be a good idea to use my glass pen on a large page. Not a good idea when you haven't got a lot of time. I'll try that another day when I know I can take perhaps two or three days and put lots of detail on. And I went for this idea using my brush, which I think worked better. I really like this. It's got a minimalist look about it because of the restricted colours, but also a lovely flow. It's not angular. It's just the sort of thing that appeals to me. I did get carried away with the spluttering. I started to win a little bit to see what it would look like and fell in love with it. And as you can see, I'm all spluttered at my arms. The table's covered. The floor is covered. My ink pots are covered. But oh, it was so much fun. If you'd like to see more haul videos, art videos, painting, hints, tips, tutorials, then why not subscribe? And that way then you'll get to know whenever I put out any new content and you won't miss any of my videos. I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, draw every day and have fun. Bye!